But I remember when I was uh, young, being out bush, uh, somewhere remote, me and my sister, my brothers, we'd be playing, uh, mum be over at the campfire, she cooking stew, uh, fried scone or damper, and she'd be yelling at us too, uh, you know, not to turn the wireless up in the truck too loud, might bring the snake into the camp. Uh, not to play with the fire, because we used to stick twigs in the fire at night and wave it around like this. She'll look at us and go, you're going to see a gun tonight? That's the spirit or ghost. So instead we go uh, play in the back of the truck, you know, jump around with all the mattresses and pillow, blankets, then dad would come in. He'd be like, you know, I told you not to play in the back of the truck here, all them things in the back of the truck. So dad, he'd, he'd carry human skulls, human bones, they'd be wrapped up in bark or in a blanket. Some of you might think dad was some sort of puri puri man or witch doctor or, you know, black magic. But dad, um, dad, he would uh, tell us uh, not to uh, worry about these things that he'd carry. He grew up in Yarraba Mission. It was one of the many missions set up back in the day uh, by the government to, to house, protect, or Christianize Aboriginal people. My mum, she grew up in Mona Mona. My grandmother here on the end when she was about 14 years old. So I near my grandparents standing in front of their, their house at Mona Mona not long after they got married. And last year, mum took us uh, back onto Mona Mona for the first time since I was young. She's showing us where she was born, showing us uh, where she was uh, born under this big tree. You know, how many of us can, can point to the spot and, and say we were born there or I was born there? So my grandparents, mum, they'd always, always be telling us stories of, of how it was like growing up in the mission under the control of the, the mission headmasters. So my dad's job, he was an archaeological relics ranger, which meant he used to receive taken artifacts and take them back onto country, take them back the proper way, basically taking them home. So I was yarning with him the other night and, and he told me a funny story that I wanted to share. Um, he was telling us about when he used to work, everywhere he went, people used to, to um, ask him, aren't you scared of those things in the back of the truck there? You know? We, uh, in our culture, we believe that there's uh, presence or spirit connected to these, these bones. Everywhere we take them, that thing follows it. And these people will say, you know, aren't you scared? Something going to show up or you're going to see something? Or Dad said, you know, not to be scared of these things because, you know, ghosts can't hurt you. And he said, but in saying that, if these things ever show up or torment me at night in my sleep, Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wind the window down and chuck it out. <laughs> but yeah, so dad and mom said that we never had much money, so that's why they always took us with him on, the, on these trips when he was working away. So dad's job was to photograph, he'd document, he would um, monitor sites, cave paintings, areas of, of cultural significance. So... It was because of these things I was able to see some of, some of the oldest paintings in the world. Therefore, I was able to hear some of the oldest stories in the world. You know, I, I was hooked. I would dream of these stories. Imagine being in that cave when the old fella painting up on the wall, fireplace in the corner, looking out across this untouched, unbroken land. 
So, all our knowledge we have today in our culture has been passed down through, through storytelling, um, through dancing, you know, shake a leg, warma. Um, us Bama, when I say Bama, I'm talking about uh, tropical North Queensland, Aboriginal people from the rainforests. We are Jabogai people, come into that. We, we've lived here for thousands of years. We've survived here. And I want to uh, say that these memories and, and, and stories from when I was young is where I get my creativity from for my art. It's, it's why I paint what I paint. It's why I dance the traditional way. I learned when I was small growing up in, in a small community up in Cape York. Um, our ancestors in the in back in the day used to come together and they used to they used to gather and uh, come for ceremonies initiations they they would share ideas share stories share dance you know ideas worth sharing you know sound familiar <laughs> yeah. this here isn't a new idea we just our ancestors didn't have YouTube back then <laughs> okay um, I'm gonna share with you another story this is in the form of uh, art, basically how I tell my story. Uh, this one here is an old story. It is a Jabogai story. Uh, close to the Cairns City where the Freshwater Creek runs into the Barren River at a waterhole that we call Bira, Bira or Biragara. It's where, uh, close to where the young boys used to be initiated. It's a... Uh, story about the two brothers when uh, they came down from the north they were se uh, sent down by Buluru which is our like our creator most cultures are uh, Aboriginal have dream time we have story water in this area and Buluru sent these two brothers and they basically um, bring us our laws give us uh, our Moari system taught us how to live hunt taught our language gather fish in our country. Now, the following story you see takes shape there is of Damri uh, Ganyarajara, which is the crocodile and Damri, how Damri gave the teeth to the crocodile. So it happened at this waterhole called Bitter, where Damri found the crocodile. He was starving, he had no teeth, he couldn't catch his food, so Damri felt sorry for this, this big animal and he he said, I'm going to make you teeth, you know, many teeth. So he took his stone axe and he cut teeth out of stone and hard wood. And he, he gave him to the crocodile. And, and Ganyara come out of the water and bit his leg off, you know, because he offered his leg to the crocodile. You know, try your teeth out on my leg. Dumri crawled up the mountain. He rested high up on this big mountain. We call Banda Dumri today. Okay, this one here is an old story was told to me, which I'm going to pass down to that next generation. Um, pass down um, all these artifacts that I learned to make from my, my grandparents, parents. I'm going to pass them down, like physically and in story. Uh, these stories, I believe, in my culture, is important. Like I said before, that's how our knowledge was passed down so what I'm saying here today is how important it is to to keep telling stories to pass that knowledge down because we can't always rely on technology to pass knowledge okay we can't always remember something you see on a board or a piece of paper can't compare that to being sat down around the fire and hearing that spoken word so I want to finish off by saying Gulubulma, Ngayan, Bama Irekanji, Bama Jabugai, Bulbu Jibinji, Nyurma Gugarani. Everyone, my name is Bernard Lee Singleton. Thank you.